Welcome to install 111, configure the EOM and service processor. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video, we learn the functions of the EOM and the service processor and how to configure them in data on tap 7 mode and cluster on tap. The location of the EOM port varies by platform, but is always designated by a wrench symbol and is next to lock wrenched or EOP port. Overview of EOM. Small businesses tend to have a flat network infrastructure. Once a business grows to be mid-size or larger, the network begins to segregate to reduce contention for bandwidth and to improve security. The IT department may create a dedicated network or subnet just for monitoring and managing servers and switches. This is what the EOM is designed to be connected to. Starting with the FAS 8000 series, the port jumps from 100 megabit to 1 gigabit Ethernet. Overview of Service Processor The service processor serves two functions. The primary function is to monitor the storage controller independently of data on tap and generates an auto support email if data on tap crashes and is unable to send out an auto support. The benefit to storage administrators is the ability to manage the system over extranets and the internet, which is convenient if there's a power outage at 2 a.m. and allows the storage administrator to gracefully power off the system from home rather than driving to the office. Because the service processor shares the same physical network port on the storage controller, it is important that the network administrator configure the associated port on the network switch to communicate with the network or subnet the EOM talks to and the network the service processor talks to. A newly installed system running 7 mode data on tap will boot into the setup wizard. Enter the IP address information for the EOM port just like you would for any other network interface. Do not use the setup wizard once a system has been configured. This may erase SIF share and NFS export information. Instead use the ifconfig command. Just remember the M in E0M is capitalized. The service processor has its own wizard which will run after the setup wizard during initial install. You can also use the SP setup command at any time to configure or modify the service processor. Reboot the service processor. This takes about one minute. Then verify the settings were retained. Since the service processor is considered a management device rather than a network port, the C dot commands to manage it are under storage node rather than network interface.
you need to tell the service processor whether it should use IP version 4 or version 6, enable it, and give it an IP address with a net mask and gateway. Then verify the settings were applied. At this point in the installation, all the hardware has been installed and configured. If you are an installation professional, it's time to run Config Advisor one last time and to send your service engagement report or trip report. For end users, your next concern is maintaining the system to keep it running without interruption. We recommend starting the maintenance video series beginning with Maintenance 100 which covers best practices for preventive maintenance.